So good evening everyone, welcome to our teaching session. My name is Nikki Evans and I'll be modulating this evening. We also have Mr. Hani Albardesi who is presenting an approach to leg lens discrepancy, which is an important topic for the exam and can be confusing for some candidates. Hani's going to make that topic nice and clear for us today. I'd also like to introduce our other mentors, Mr. Swan Hanari and Mr. Srivathan. Following the um, presentation, we'll have time for some questions and I'd like to ask you to write your questions in the chat box, which we will monitor and we'll ask Hani at the end of his lecture. If you miss any part of the lecture, don't panic. It is recorded and it will be available on the FRCS YouTube channel in due course. Following the questions, we will stop the recording and we'll proceed to Viva practice. Again, if you'd like to participate, we request that you raise your hand or identify yourself in the chat box, along with when you're sitting the part two exam. We understand that putting yourself forward for these vivas can be intimidating and stressful, but it's really the best way to practice your exam technique and rest assured that all of us mentors have been through the same experience. As always, we recommend our study guide, the Concise Orthopedic Notes, which is available um, on Amazon. Um, it's been written by our mentors and is a very good resource. Um, if you require a CPD certificate, then please email us on the FRC men FRCS mentor at gmail.com. Um, and without any further ado, I will pass you over to Mr. Hannah Hani Albardesi for the lecture. Thank you very much. Today, about the approach to the leg lens discrepancy, it's a very important topic. I, actually, I got uh, this is a case with leg lens discrepancy in my clinical part of the exam, and it is very, very common. So I will try to go through uh, quickly this and how to uh, examine and do a discussion in, in less than five minutes. So usually leg lens discrepancy will come as a short case. So you have to do everything in three minutes and two minutes for discussion. So first I want to share the, uh, the book of the FRCS mentors, the concise orthopedic notes. I think it's a very helpful book for the FRCS exam. Okay, so number three. So you have a three minutes to do examination, full examination of this case. And I think it's number three. You can like uh, categorize everything in three points, whatever the reasons, your approach, how you management, everything. Make it like a slick answer. and it, will not uh, <clears throat> forget that if in your money if you in your mind you have like category you have you have organized your answer about that so we'll start that first you will, you will see a child in the exam and the examiner will ask you just examine this patient so have a look from the front from the side from the back and usually in the leg lens discrepancy you will you will see imbalance so have a look at the shoulder, have a look at the pelvis, have a look at the knee of the knees and the foot. And as I said, look from the front, look on the side, look in the back, you might, you might find scoliosis, you might find any, any signs uh, uh, and mention everything about that. Then ask the patient to walk. Uh, so ask the patient to walk, just say it simply, it's a short limb gait. So usually the examiner will not ask you about that, but if asked you to comment about the short limb gait, just ask the, the pelvic tilt down to the affected side and to compensate the lens and allow the ground clearance of the longer limb. So just for example, in sobratrochantric shortening with abductor insufficiency, walking become difficult and the foot may subinate or patient may walk on the toes to compensate for the short limb and the normal limb may compensate by flexion of the hip and knee. So that is why, that is the short limb gait if you, if you, the examiner asked you to analyze what is a short limb gait. But simply say, ask the patient to walk and short limb gait. Then put the patient in the, in, on, the, on, the, on the table and just do measurement. So that is a true uh, lens would we'll start from two pony prominent. I usually start from the ante anterior subbilical spine to the medial malleolus, like in this picture. Okay, and to compare to the other side. Then, don't forget to measure the apparent lens. 
So we'll start from the umbilicus it's to the, the same point of the middle malleolus. And now show the difference. Like if the true shortening is equal to the apparent shortening, it indicates there is no compensation. So there is no adductor deformity in this case. If the true shortening is more than the apparent shortening, it indicates that the part of shortening has been compensated for. And if the true shortening is less than the apparent shortening, it would suggest a fixed adduction deformity. So the patient will adduct his leg to compensate this shortening. So usually when you ask the patient to put him in, on, on the bed or on the table. So uh, you usually square the pelvis and you will put the two limbs parallel to each other to make the true uh, measurement. However, in some cases, the patient has adductor deformities. Don't force the patient to, 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 like, to, to become square, uh, to square his pelvis, but say to the examiner, I'm unable to place legs perpendicular to the pelvis because adduction contraction don't hurt the patient, that's very important. The same thing, if the patient has deformity, like a valgus knee, so you, you, you couldn't put the two limbs parallel to each other, so say to the examiner, I am unable to place the leg straight because of the valgus knee. Don't force the patient to do anything, don't hurt the patient, please. Okay, so next, sometimes the examiner will ask you, what is the reason for that? So, Many books mentioned like the, maybe congenital disorder, hemihypertrophy, all these things are true, but this is the wrong way to answer. So go back. Remember the number three. So keep it simple but precise. So the, the leg length discrepancy, maybe from the spine, from the pelvis, from the lower limb. And from the, from the lower limb, maybe with the femur, maybe from the tibia, maybe from the hind foot. And don't forget the hind foot. Okay, so the femur may be sobratrochantric or infratrochantric. I, I like to answer it like that. Don't do like that. Okay, flex the knees and do a Galitz test. So that will differentiate between is it like a femur or tibia? Okay, and you can see here if the, if the femur is, is longer than is, is, the, is a shortening in the femur. You will see in the upper uh, left side, and in the tibia, it will, will, will like in, in the picture, see here. So it's very easy to differentiate between if the shortening is in the tibia or in the femur. And don't forget the hind foot as well. Okay, so if the, if the shortening in the femur, which is the most common thing, so you, you need to differentiate if the shortening is subtrochantric or sobratrochantric. So differentiate between that, between both of these, you have to do Bryant's triangle. So you will use three fingers. You will put one finger at the tip of the GT, the second finger and the anterior superior elix spines, and you will drop your finger, other fingers parallel to it, and you will measure this line. So you will measure, I will, from the, the, this here to there. This is a dotted line. That's, that's you will measure. This is a distance that you will measure in the exam. And you will compare to the other side. Okay, sometimes to, make, to, to square the pelvis, you like, like to, to do like a block uh, to, 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 to measure how, how, many, how many like shortening the other limb, but you will not find that in the real exam. Okay, so, okay, you did the examinations, you did your measurement, you found where exactly the side of shortening. So the examiner will ask you what you will do next. You will do like an X-ray of the whole lower limb or scanogram, which is the most accurate. Uh, uh, measure for leg length discrepancy. Okay, so now there is a three categories. So either the shortening is from zero to two centimeters or from two to five centimeter or from five or more than five centimeter. Okay, so, and there is a specific, a specific treatment for each of this one. So there is a, something called white uh, Menelius method to like anticipate how many groaning or remain like how many growth uh, remaining for the lower limb and usually the knees grows by around 15 millimeter per year and you will do like assumption that the, the boy will grow until 16 years and the girls up to 14 years 
But this is like a rough estimations, and this most probably will find you will be asked in this in the first part in the MCQ. But in the second part, I don't find it's more practical. So what you should do to this graph because it will give you standard deviation between the chronological age and the bone age, because sometimes the bone age is not matching with the chronological age. Uh, so recently, so Paligross, there is that is called multiplier, and you, this is an applications all the pediatric specialist in the UK and Ireland use this application, either multiplier or Pali. So it's a very handy application. You'll find it in Apple stores. So you will, you, will, you, will, you will enter the age of the patient and the gender, and, we, and it will calculate for you how many, like when, when you will do like arthrodesis or when you will do your surgery. And it's very, it's very good. And I, it's very nice to mention in the exam if you know it. And just download it in your mobile and, and, and try to, 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 to measure one or two cases just to be familiar with it. It's very important and you might, you might, you might get an eight mark if you mention that in the exam. Okay, so if the shortening less than two centimeter, with no surgeries. So we'll just show left. We'll, you'll, you'll give the patient in soul to compensate for the limb, uh, for the length discrepancy. As, as you see, this child is, is just smiling. Just, I know this more than two centimeter, but, uh, usually up to two centimeters, more than two centimeters, we have to do surgery. Okay, so in two to five centimeters, you will do, start to do surgery here. You will do like epiphysiodesis of the long side or shortening osteotomy of the long, uh, osteotomy if, if the patient is mature for, the, for like uh, adult patient. But for it, uh, pediatric, we usually do epiphysiodesis of the long side. If it's the more than five centimeter, so you will go for limb, limb lengthening. So you, you, you couldn't show, like uh, make the patient shorter more than five centimeters. And that is why we length th this short limb. So how you can do lengthening of, of, of the short side. So either like a, a external fixator or internal. External fixator like Elizarov, like this case, will do distraction osteogenesis. So What's the principle? So you will, you will put the, the Elisa rope or the frame and you will wait for five to seven days for, to start lens, uh, to begin the distraction. Then you will, you will do distract one millimeter a day. And following distraction, so that's because it's FRCS question as well. So how many time you will wait after, after finishing the lengthening? So we have to wait the same, uh, the same uh, period. So for an example, if you are going to length the limb about 10 centimeters, that you will wait for 105 or 107 days, and you will keep the Elizarov for the same period. So you will wait almost 210 days, which is a very, very long uh, time for the patient to keep the Elizarov in, in the limb. So that is why there is intramedullary lengthening device with a growing nail. It's very expensive, but it, I think it's better uh, than the, the Elizarov. And sometimes if, it's, if this nail is not available, you can mix between the Elizarov and you, you, uh, the usual nail. And the reason for the nail, just to, 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 to remove the Elizarov early after, after just finishing the lengthening. Okay, so sometimes, the leg length discrepancy is associated with deformity. So like a valgus deformity, that is the only pathology. So in, in this case, you might use this eight plate, which is a hemi epiphysiodesis. Okay, so sometimes you'll, the, the examiner will make sure you some x-rays about these eight plates. And I know this is something maybe advanced for day one uh, uh, consultant, but just to, to understand the principle of it. How, how you, how it's, how, how, how it's like, what's the principle behind the eight plate and how you can use it. Simply, it is a percutaneous, you just open three centimeter incision uh, over the physis under image. You will pass the guide wire. And the most important thing here, you have to put the wire central in the sagittal plane. Because if you put it anterior, that means that more gross will be posterior and that will give you a, a recurvatum. 
And if you boost it more slightly and uh, and, the, and the posterior, it grow more anterior that will be broker vitum. So make sure that the guide wire is centered in the sagittal plane. And after that, you will put the, the plate and you'll put these uh, two screws or sometimes it's four screws, depend, depends. And you should be parallel to each other. And so this is an X-ray and the, how you can differentiate between like if this A plate, it's just applied or like applied one year ago or, or, or few months ago. Usually you will find that screw is not parallel. It start to diverge. That means that it's grows to the other side and stop growing at this side. And the whole of the blade, if you, if you, if you have a look at the whole of the blade, it, allow, it allows the screws to divert. Okay, so sometimes the examiner may, in the viva, may start you with, with an X-ray like that and ask you just to comment. So you will see from the X-ray, so the screws in the medial side of the lower femur, it's not parallel, it's divergent. That means that it's old, it's not, it's not a new. So this surgery done maybe one, one year or more. And the patient becoming virus. So we'll ask you just to comment on this X-ray. So if you understand the mechanism of action of, of this plate, you will know this is an old, and this is a complication of the eight plate, which is the overgrowth like over over the uh, uh, like uh, the stop growth here and the deformity become more so it's, it converted from valgus to various deformity now and so eight blade it should be like monitoring for it so it sh it sh the, it the patient should be follow up in the clinic and to monitor the growth and to avoid this complication okay so this is a, 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 like a good example, you can see here, like the, the limbs is well aligned and the screw is divergent. So that means it's not new and the limb is, is, is well aligned, no deformity, no virus, no valgus. So now you can, you can take, 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 it, take it out now and allow for normal growth. Okay, so we'll take home a uh, message. So in the pediatric, so we can start for show left, if it's less than two centimeter, the physio deficit, growth arrest, if two to five centimeter, if more than that, you will go for lengthening for the short limb. And usually the same in the other two, you can use the Eliza roof and you can use the, the nail for lengthening. I, I usually, I, I, I personally prefer the interim dollar nail because most of the patients will not be happy with this Eliza roof to kept for about four or five months. In, in, inside the limb, and thank you. Thank you for that very comprehensive um, lecture. Um, in terms of when you're monitoring uh, eight plates, yeah. um, would you ask the patient to come and visit uh, every year and do an x-ray or every month, or do you leave it to the parents to t uh, watch for the, for the genovalgum or genovirus? No, actually, I, I will not. I will not. I will not leave it to the parents. I have to see the patients and will do an X-ray and do, to measure uh, how much like correction because it varies. Always, all the people will not behave the same. Okay, and uh, my second question is in terms of timing of your uh, surgery. Uh, that is why I use application. Usually, my, my boss and all the pediatric specialists usually do use these applications. It's very handy. You just enter the patient date of birth, the gender, and the, the, the like discrepancy in the lens, and he will let you know when to do the, the, the surgery. The, and the aiming of the timing is? Yeah, everything. Sorry, my apologies, I misphrased that. The aiming of the timing is so that the growth plate stops growing at the time you want. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. No, yeah, no yeah. forever. No, 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 not forever. You, you have to take it out, yeah? Yeah. I apologize, but I'm, uh, so, um, okay, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Hani. There's a couple of questions popped up. Um, the first one is, what about Fiseal bar excision? Actually, it's, a fi it's, a, it's another option as well, but uh, usually there is any like a post-traumatic or, or like a post-infection, 
to something like legal physical part. So you have to do like a metaphysical window and we'll take, we'll remove this bar. So yeah, it, it, is, it is one of the options as well. Okay, thank you. Um, we've got a question from uh, Melindu, who says, please, can you explain how to square the pelvis? You will just do your hand, just ask the patient to lie down and put your hand on the uh, anterior subiliac iliac spines and make it square. Okay. Uh, Mohammed has asked if we could write down the name of the app for him. But actually, you, actually you, just write multiplier in or, or any like Apple store or anything, you'll find it. And anyway, this, this like video will be like, uh, will be in the YouTube on, on our page. So uh, actually I can share, I, ca I can share this uh, picture from my presentation to the Telegram group. Hey, thanks, honey. Um, we've also got Hassan. Uh, when Will we do permanent epiphysodesis for leg length discrepancy at any age? So if you like the remaining growth period, it's just the time to compensate the discrepancy. So you, you will keep it forever. You will do permanent. Okay. Um, and we've got one from Adam who says, uh, in regards to less than two centimeters, there is no compensation from the pelvis and spine. I think that means, is there any compensation? It's very mild, two centimeters, just if you do, if you, if you do like a short lift, that is, it will be compensated. So it's a very mild discrepancy here. Um, I think the question is more, um, will there be, if you don't use a shoe lift, will the spine compensate? And, uh, it will, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's better, yeah, to, 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 if the patient is symptomatic, just to give him a short lift, yeah. It's also, it decreases uh, the risk of uh, spine problems as the patient gets older and or uh, uh, more active. Okay. Uh, there's a couple more questions. Uh, one just disappeared. How can we measure length length, leg length in cases of flexion contraction of the knee in knee arthrodesis and in case of trauma to medial malleolus? Okay, so we'll put the normal leg in the same deformity and they measure it like that and if it's a problem in the medial malleolus measuring the lateral malleolus so any bony prominent but do the same to the other side and and if there is a flexion deformity of the knee put the same deformity of the no normal side okay thanks honey and i think this is the last one um how regularly do you follow up when you put an eight plate Actually, between like every three to six months, depends, like, uh, 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 depends on the uh, surgeon preference, but almost about every six months, three to six months, it's okay. Okay, and also if the wire, if you use a wire, not screws, do you place the wire through the physis? Yes, we already do. We know that we, we, we like, we have to, to, to start with the wire because the position is a trick in this surgery to put the plate in the center, exactly in the center of the physis. <coughs> so not anterior, not posterior, because that will do more like uh, deformity in the sagittal plan. So you have to pass a wire first in the physis under image. You have to take a lateral view in the X-ray, make sure that it's central. And after that, you will, you will put the plate. Okay, thank you very much, Hani. Thank you everyone for your questions. So. Now we're going to stop the recording and we'll move on to the Viva sessions.